So, ich begrüße Sie ganz herzlich im Namen von Full Circle Insights und Fast Consulting. Ich freue mich, dass Sie in unserem Webinar Messbare Steigerung Ihrer Erfolge in Marketing und Vertrieb teilnehmen. Wir sind jetzt pünktlich um halb fünf und ich freue mich natürlich in diesen Zeiten ganz besonders, dass wir mit unseren elektronischen Möglichkeiten zusammenkommen können, um trotzdem Informationen auszutauschen und hoffe, dass Sie einiges mitnehmen können, was wir Ihnen in den nächsten 40 Minuten etwa vermitteln werden. Mein Name ist Ingo Bors, ich bin Geschäftsführer und Mitgründer der Bass Consulting GmbH und ich begrüße auch Bonnie Crater, die uns aus Kalifornien zugeschaltet ist und nachher dann auf Englisch ihren Vortrag halten wird. Zuvor gebe ich Ihnen aber noch eine ganz kurze Einführung in das Thema, mit dem wir uns in den kommenden Minuten dann auch beschäftigen werden. Eventuell kennen Sie ja dieses Bild oder Sie beschäftigen sich als Marketing- oder Vertriebsverantwortlicher tagtäglich mit Daten, Fakten, Analysen und Reports, aus denen Sie Entscheidungen ableiten müssen. Entscheidungen, die wichtig sind, um den Erfolg Ihrer Organisation und Ihres Unternehmens auch ähm, voranzutreiben und die Verbesserungen abzuleiten. Aber wie gut sind die Daten, die Sie haben, die den Auswertungen zugrunde liegen? Wie genau sind die Daten angepasst auf das, was Sie wirklich als Zielsetzung haben, um dann aus oft vorgefertigten Reports die richtigen Schlüsse zu ziehen. Nicht immer ganz einfach in der Praxis, oft äh, mit einem Bauchgefühl verbunden, mit dem wir dann gucken, ja, könnte das passen, wie können wir die Interpretation in die Richtung bringen, die wir jetzt genau mit den Informationen anreichern können, die wir benötigen. Wenn wir theoretisch vorgehen, dann wechseln wir einfach mal die Perspektive und sagen, ja gut, zu Beginn müssen wir die fachlichen Ziele festlegen. Wir müssen wissen, wo wir eigentlich hinwollen, bevor wir uns dann darum kümmern, welche KPIs dafür nötig sind, diese Ziele überhaupt zu beschreiben und zu fixieren. Wenn wir dann soweit sind und die KPIs tatsächlich gefunden haben und festgelegt haben, geht es darum, dass wir daraus die Handlungen ableiten wollen. Maßnahmen, die wir auch wieder messen wollen und messen müssen damit wir hinterher prüfen können, ob wir unsere Ziele erreicht haben oder zumindest uns den Zielen auch genähert haben. Fachliche Ziele festlegen heißt, was will ich messen? Zum Beispiel in unserem Vortrag, wenn wir es gleich vertieft hören, könnte ein fachliches Ziel sein, was ich messen will. Der Sales Cycle soll verkürzt werden oder die Marketingkanäle mit dem größten Umsatzeffekt sollen ausgebaut werden. Klare Zielsetzungen für die ich mir überlegen muss, wie will ich sie messen? Zum Beispiel, mit welchen Kennzahlen geben Aufschluss über den zeitlichen Ablauf im Sales Cycle? Oder wie kann ich den Umsatzeffekt der einzelnen Ansprachekanäle bestimmen? Woher kommen die Grunddaten und wie reduziere ich die Datensilos, die ich vielleicht noch im Unternehmen habe? Wie stelle ich die nötige Datenqualität sicher und wie können dann diese Daten auch für aussagekräftige Reports aufbereitet werden? Alles Fragen, die ich beantworten muss, um sicherzustellen, dass ich KPIs richtig definiere und hinterher auch tatsächlich auswerten kann. Und dann messen und handeln. Was lerne ich am Ende aus einer Messung? Also zum Beispiel, welche Prozesse müssen harmonisiert werden oder welche Maßnahmen werden mir helfen, meine Ziele noch schneller, noch besser zu erreichen. Die Beantwortung der Fragen ist je nach Ausgangslage eine mehr oder weniger große Herausforderung. Was wir aus der praktischen Erfahrung kennen, je nach Voraussetzungen mehr oder weniger Aufwand, sich dem zu nähern, sowohl fachlich, aber auch aus technischer Sicht. Nun haben wir mit der Partnerschaft zwischen Full Circle Insights und Business Consulting die notwendige Brücke gebaut, um zwischen den technischen und fachlichen Aufgabenstellungen speziell im Marketing und Vertrieb zu arbeiten. Die FBI mit Sitz in Kalifornien liefert alles rund um die Software und Datentechnologie. Das sind im Kern Applikationen und Lösungen für Salesforce-Infrastruktur. Aber FCI versteht es auch, die entsprechenden Voraussetzungen in den Datenstrukturen von Salesforce zu schaffen, um optimale Ergebnisse überhaupt erzielen zu können. Und FCI sorgt für die Implementierung der Apps und gegebenenfalls die Integration weiterer Datenquellen um die Informationen anzureichern. Und natürlich passt Full Circle Insights bei Bedarf die Anwendung an die individuellen Gegebenheiten an und übernimmt selbstverständlich den technischen Support. Auf der anderen Seite 
ist Bust Consulting in der Prozessberatung zu Hause und zwar speziell im Marketing und Vertrieb und vor allem, was sich rund um das CRM, das Customer Relationship Management dreht. Zusammen mit unserer Expertise im Salesforce-Umfeld identifizieren wir die Potenziale und übersetzen dann diese in geeignete fachliche und technische Anforderungen. Als lokale Ansprechpartner hier in Deutschland übernehmen wir außerdem die Koordination und Abstimmung mit Full Circle Insights und leiten auch die Projekte vom Beginn bis zum erfolgreichen Abschluss. An dieser Stelle auch noch ein kurzer Überblick unserer unsere Tätigkeitsfelder bei Bass Consulting. Co-Gründer und zweiter Geschäftsführer ist mein Partner Gerald Unger, der wie ich seit ebenfalls etwa 20 Jahren in der Beratung unterwegs ist. Zudem begleitet uns Katrin Spohr, sie ist freie Mitarbeiterin bei Bass und als Expertin zuständig für alle Fragen rund um Salesforce. Unser Fokus liegt in der Begleitung von Transformationen aller Art, das heißt in der Produktwelt, in der Prozesslandschaft oder in Bezug auf das Personal. Das sind unsere drei P's und die Veränderung ist, wie wir alle wissen, inzwischen die Regel und sie verläuft vor allem nicht sequenziell. Und deswegen haben wir die größten Herausforderungen in der Regel an den Berührungspunkten der drei P's, an den Schnittstellen, die einfach nicht mehr voneinander zu trennen sind und von vornherein in einem Projekt betrachtet werden müssen. Unsere Überzeugung ist zudem, dass das Thema Personalmanagement und Kultur das Entscheidende ist, um den Erfolg einer Transformation sicherzustellen. Social Marketing und digitale Vertriebskanäle erfordern neue Denkweisen und Organisationsstrukturen. Roboter, künstliche Intelligenz bei der Prozessautomatisierung schaffen auch neue Arbeitsstrukturen. Und daher haben wir einen speziellen Leistungsblock in unserem Portfolio geschaffen, der sich genau diesem Thema auch widmet. Aber zentral für uns ist immer die Operational Excellence, so will ich es mal nennen, also das praktische Umsetzen, das praktische Handeln im Bereich Marketing, Vertrieb und Service, um insbesondere den Vertriebserfolg sicherzustellen oder zu erhöhen und das dann basierend auf optimierten Prozessen und einer aussagekräftigen Analytik. Und damit sind wir auch schon wieder bei unserem Thema. Denn wir sprechen gleich über Dinge, die sich im Reich der Salesforce.com-Plattform bewegen. Lösungen für Salesforce.com. Wir sprechen auch über Lösungen, die eine enge Zusammenarbeit zwischen Marketing und Vertrieb erfordern. Das heißt, Marketing und Vertrieb sind in der Regel bei der Umsetzung gleichermaßen gefordert. Dann taucht ein Begriff öfter auf, den wir nachher wieder aufnehmen. Das sind die Funnel Matrix. Das ist die genaue Analyse des Marketing- und Vertriebsprozesses von der ersten Ansprache bis zum Abschluss der Final Conversion. Dabei geht es vor allem um die Kenngrößen, Menge, Geschwindigkeit und Umwandlungsraten von Schritt zu Schritt im Vertriebstrichter, also dem Funnel, dem Durchlauf durch den Sales Cycle. Und dann ein wichtiger Begriff, der uns begleiten wird, das ist die Attribution. Das sind die Möglichkeiten, den Anteil des erzielten Umsatzes auf die einzelnen Kampagnen aufzuschlüsseln. Und das ist durchaus nicht einfach und recht tricky und da werden wir gleich von Bonnie noch einiges zu hören. Kommen wir aber nun zum zentralen Thema des Webinars, nämlich zur Präsentation, die auf Englisch erfolgt, die etwa 25 bis 30 Minuten Anspruch nehmen wird. Gehalten wird der Vortrag von Bonnie Crater. Bonnie ist Co-Founder und President und CEO von Full Circle Insights. Die Firma ist ansässig in San Mateo, Kalifornien. Ebenfalls mit einigen Maßnahmen zur Kontaktvermeidung versorgt, wie wir eben hören mussten, mit wenig Berührungspunkten, viel Homeoffice und keinem Verkehr. Vor der Gründung von Full Circle Insights hat Bonnie als Vice President und Senior Vice President des Marketing in einer Reihe von Firmen geleitet. Unter anderem war sie bei Genesis, Netscape, Stratify und auch bei Salesforce.com selber. Seit 2013 wurde sie mehrfach ausgezeichnet, zum Beispiel auch durch das Silicon Valley Business Journal als eine der 100 Most Influential Women. Und ihre Karriere begann sie, wie so viele im Silicon Valley, bei Oracle. Bonnie, I've introduced you and explained our partnership. Now we are excited to learn more about how leading marketers use measurement to increase sales. And because I forgot, 
edition, we have finally a question and answer session. Und da können Sie auch während der, des Vortrages auf der rechten Seite, wenn Sie den Balken standardmäßig eingeblendet haben, schon Ihre Fragen abschicken und als Chat zu uns senden. So, Bonnie, I'm sorry, I had to talk to about the question and answer before, but now um, it's, it's your uh, screen. So please go on. We would like to see how we use attribution and funnel metrics to raise the efficiency of sales. Thanks, Inga, for the introduction. And, and thanks, everyone, for uh, joining our webinar today. We're going to talk about how leading marketers use measurement to increase sales and also efficiency in the marketing budget. But first, to get started, I wanted to introduce you a little bit to Full Circle. Uh, Full Circle is a software company uh, that's has a, a set of applications that are built on the Salesforce platform. And uh, what we do is we help marketing people accurately track and measure the impact of their marketing campaigns on pipeline and revenue. Uh, um, the offerings include uh, measuring marketing attribution, so also digital marketing attribution. We do integrated campaign analysis. Uh, we help with revenue operations. And we also support uh, different styles of marketing, including account-based marketing. It's a, a comprehensive and complete solution that, uh, again, lives on the Salesforce platform. And we decided to build the products that way because we felt that, uh, that if all the data was put into Salesforce, then both sales and marketing could see the same data and it would be easier for them to work together. Uh, the companies that we help with uh, often spend an enormous amount of money on marketing and sales. Sometimes over half of the revenue is spent on marketing and sales. And so any changes that they can make to become more efficient in their marketing and sales operation can have an enormously positive impact on the, the operations of the companies. So to get started, uh, in the bad old days, what we used to do is we used to measure the performance of marketing based on the number of leads that marketing was generating for sales. And so I wanted to start off with this very simple example, which is here's a list that comes straight out of Salesforce. And you can see here that the B2B fusion party list generated 2,523 leads. Uh, further down the list, you can see that this demo request generated 210,000 leads. So if you were looking at this list some time ago, you would say, oh, well, we should do more parties because that generates a lot more leads. However, today what we do is we, we don't look at lead count as much. We look at, uh, sorry, we look at the impact of the campaigns on, uh, on sales. And so you can see here that demo request is not at, you know, in the middle of the pack, it is at the top and it's the most important uh, campaign to run. So what this tells, a marketing person is, uh, uh, is, and it drives the marketing person to think about how they can drive more demo requests because that is the most important product, uh, most, most important campaign for that company. The way that uh, we help our customers is that we developed a full circle methodology. So we call it the full circle method. And it has four pieces uh, that uh, our customers uh, follow our best customers do this um, and actually all, all marketers um, do have a planning process so there's a dashboard that's set up to help with this planning process and so it reviews what happened in the past so a marketer can try to project what how many leads they would need to generate for future to drive future sales in the planning process of course marketers will develop goals and so there's a, a dashboard that's set up for achieving. And that is the dashboard that you measure your progress against the goals that you've set. The third, third piece of this is uh, we, we call optimizing. It's a dashboard for optimizing your sales and uh, marketing processes. And in particular, there's a heavy emphasis on the marketing to sales handoff. So that's where, of course, marketing is handing off leads to sales. And what happens during that transition? So you can see uh, which processes are performing well, which are not, and then you can make changes uh, in how you're working with sales to, uh, to op optimize performance. The last dashboard is the evaluating dashboard. And this is an important dashboard because what it does is it tells a marketer which 
campaigns are actually impacting sales uh, pipeline and sales the most. And so using this dashboard, you can optimize your marketing mix and you can invest more money into programs that are having high impact on sales and less money into programs that are having uh, very little impact on sales. So that's the full circle method, planning, achieving, optimizing, and evaluating. So customers that follow this, this methodology oftentimes get a, about a 30% lift in their marketing budget. And the reason is, of course, that a lot of times when we're flying blind, we invest in marketing programs that simply don't have that much impact on sales. You might actually see a large number of leads, as we had in that example with the party list, but the actual impact on sales is very low. And so um, it's very common for us to see customers that uh, get about a 30% bump in the efficiency of their marketing spend. So these kinds of companies, they do this virtuous circle. It's a cycle of activities. The first thing that they'll do is they'll align sales and marketing on a company objective, particularly a sales objective. The second thing that they do is adopt funnel metrics um, and attribution. Then the third thing they do is hold regular meetings between sales ops and marketing ops. That might be a weekly meeting or a bi-weekly meeting. And then maybe once a month, they update the executives of, uh, in the company about what their findings are and what changes that they're making. So in these regular meetings, they'll identify areas of improvement. Then they will adjust, make adjustments to their sales and marketing operations and then start all over again. This process um, is, uh, works really well and uh, our, you know, the, our best customers follow it. One of our best customers is a company called Hired. Uh, this is a tech jobs marketplace and it's based in San Francisco, California. And uh, you see here, this is Katrina Wong. She's the VP of marketing. And when she joined Hired, she, the, the company had a B2C, largely a B2C model, and she had to build out a B2B marketing playbook when she joined the company. And specifically, she needed to uh, attribute sales or attribute revenue to very specific marketing programs, the, the different channels that they were investing in, and also campaigns so they could allocate their marketing budget in the most effective way. So she needed a system that could easily track leads and then generate the reports that would be used by both marketing and the revenue team so that they can optimize their performance and work better together. So they had some really good results. Um, they, uh, uh, their field marketing team generated a six-fold ROI. They also uh, were, had a clever campaign they won a, a, an important award for. And then finally, they were able to show really bulletproof data that marketing ha had a very important role in the business of the company. And that, in fact, that marketing contributed more than half of the closed one business. So here's what Katrina said. With Full Circle, my marketing playbook is complete because I can prove my strategy is effective. So let's uh, talk about funnel metrics and attribution. These are the two key marketing metrics that we feel are most important for measuring marketing. And so just going back to that example that we talked about in the past, here's this demo request, um, which is low down the list on, when measuring leads and high on the list when uh, measuring against uh, a, an with an, using an attribution model. And so I want to first start talking about uh, attribution uh, because it gives good visibility into what's really working um, in your company. So uh, here's an example of attribution. Um, here's a, uh, a company that's generated $18 million in sales and um, when, you, when you're talking attribution, what you want to do is you want to take this $18 million and then be, have it a logical way of dividing it up and assigning it to various campaigns or campaign types that are running. So these are, here are six campaign types that might be typical of a B2B uh, company, running ads, doing emails, maybe banner ads, uh, running seminars, webinars, and then there's another category. And so you can see that in this particular case, an email looks like it's the most effective channel uh, for the company uh, because it's generating the, the most um, 
uh, in sales or is associated with most in, most uh, in sales. So there's different types of attribution. Um, as we talk about in the bad old days, we counted leads, but with revenue attribution, there's lots of different ways to actually set it up. And the reason that you want to uh, you want to pick one of these models based on your marketing strategy, and we can talk about that in a little bit. So um, types of models include a single touch, a multi-touch, a custom weighted and custom factors model. So in a, uh, as everyone knows, in, a, in the B2B context, uh, for a particular sales, there can often be five to 10 marketing touches during that sale. And so what you want to do is you want to understand what the impact is of each of those touches. Um, so in certain models, you might emphasize one touch over another. So in a single touch model, you would attribute that all of that $18 million to, to the, for whatever the first touch is. Or you might have a last touch model, which uh, is the last touch before the, uh, the sale um, or before that particular deal uh, turns into an opportunity for sales. Or you might have uh, the, the tipping point touch, which um, is, the, is the touch that uh, is um, the, uh, forces the uh, marketing to hand over the lead to sales. So in a single touch model, you're allocating all of the revenue or all of the sales to one particular touch. And obviously, uh, if you out do that allocation, um, it creates some interesting results, but we know that because there's five to 10 touches on average um, in, in, in many cases for uh, a B2B sale, you would want to try to include all of the touches. And so then you move to a multi-touch type model. In a multi-touch model, um, you can have lots of different ways to weight the touches. So here we have an example of an even spread model where the $18 million would be allocated among all of these six touches. Then um, you might have a custom weighted model. And in a custom weighted model, you might emphasize timing or campaign type. So you might have put a higher weight on earlier touches, or you might have put higher weight on later touches, depending on what your marketing strategy is. Or you might have a higher weight on a particular type of, of campaign. Um, in, an, in a custom factors type model, you might put a weight on how long uh, a, a person might, uh, or a prospect might spend on a particular type of uh, campaign. So for example, uh, if they're reading an article, you might give that a lower uh, a lower weight because it takes less time to or less time spent. But if they spend an hour on a webinar, you might weight it higher. So these are the different types of of models, and there there's no right answer for um, or for for all companies. Each company would want to uh, select a model that works for their marketing strategy. Next, I want to talk about funnel metrics. So funnel metrics are, um, are important because they uh, tell you a lot about how your marketing, marketing and sales operations are working. And there's three key metrics. There's volume, velocity, and conversion rate. The volume is, is the count of leads that, of how many leads are going through the funnel at different stages. The velocity is how fast the leads are progressing through the funnel, and the conversion rate shows the actual percentage conversion from stage to stage. So here's an example of uh, volume metrics. And in here, we have a chart. This comes straight out of Salesforce. And you have a listing of campaign types, which would be typical campaigns for um, uh, a B2B type company. So, you would, uh, so here's a, a campaign type conferences. Then we have banner ads, and then we have email, then we have inbound activity, we have webinars and web activity. And on this horizontal axis here, these labels are uh, stages in the funnel. So the first stage here is inquiry or target. Then we have um, a marketing qualified lead. That's what MQL is, or qualified target. Then SAL is sales accepted lead. SQL is sales qualified lead. 
and then SQL1 would be a deal that's one. And these are uh, standard uh, funnel stages that was first developed by a company called Serious Decisions back um, over 10 years ago, and have become basically the standard in how um, uh, in the standard stages in B2B marketing. So you can he see here, these are volume metrics and these are lead counts in various stages. So you can see 858 for the conference is in inquiry target. Um, MQL um, for marketing qualified leads 151, 68 for SAL and 42 for sales qualified lead and 31 deals have won. Then you can look at the, the total um, uh, contract value of each of these various campaign types. And you can see that conferences are the most important campaign type for this particular uh, example. Let's move on. Um, so we talked about volume, let's talk about conversion rates. Conversion rates measure the uh, percentage conversion from stage to stage. And so you can see here, we have the same campaign types, but you also have across the up, uh, top axis here, uh, these, these labels are, the percentage of conversion from stage to stage. So the percentage of inquiry to MQL or the percentage of MQL to SAL and so on. Then you can also measure the overall conversion rate from inquiry to, to one. And you can see here that's listed in this green column here. The average um, conversion rate is 4.8%, as you can see from uh, overall um, inquiry to one. But you can see that the inbound leads here in this particular example are of 7.5% are the, the highest, which would mean that, that those particular campaigns are the most effective from a conversion rate standpoint. Then velocity. Velocity is really an important metric because it allows you to measure how fast the leads are actually moving through the funnel. And so, think about it if you have a if you're say your average velocity is 30 days if you can cut that to 15 days and literally close uh, deals twice as fast you get twice the number of uh, twice the amount of revenue in that time frame than you would otherwise so velocity can have a, a very big effect on um, on the results of marketing campaigns. So looking at to, looking to see which campaigns seem to drive the fastest velocity, velocity can be a very important metric. So here we have these same campaign types, and then you can see velocity, which is measured in days. So this would be a marketing qualified lead to sales expect, accepted lead. Um, this It's MQR to SAR, which is marketing qualified response to sales accepted response in this particular category. Um, there's sales accepted response to sales qualified and then sales qualified to close one. And you can see on for, for conferences, um, the average from MQR to SAR is 22 days. The average from SAR to SQR is two days and the average from SQR to close one is eight days. So the total average is 32 days. Uh, the best ca campaigns, it looks like, so smaller, when it comes to velocity, smaller is better. Um, the average velocity for webinars is 17 days, um, at, which is almost half that of, or of, uh, of conferences. So those, um, despite in the previous chart where we saw conferences was generating more uh, volume and sales, um, the webinars seem to close deals at twice the rate. So uh, emphasizing webinars might be the right strategy. Here's an example of a customer of ours, Jobvite, um, and they needed to ra actually raise money. They were a sm small company, Silicon Valley based company. They needed to raise a series C. In order to do that, they needed to raise certain, uh, meet certain revenue goals. And so um, the CEO of Jobvite enlisted both the sales and marketing teams to work together on this. He, uh, and uh, so the first thing that the, the marketing people did was to align their teams and then do a system evaluation to try to organize their uh, data to get a single source of truth. Um, they used full circle and that's the, our ability to store the data in Salesforce as a, a good way of doing that. And then they did what we call a reverse funnel to set goals. So they used the planning um, dashboard to actually generate information so they could set marketing goals for themselves. 
they then went through and identified the best and most effective programs so that they could optimize their marketing spend. And then they did a lot of checks on uh, the marketing to sales handoff to see if they could improve the efficiency there. And they were able to do that. They were running Full Circle plus Marketo and Salesforce. And so what happened was um, not only did they meet their goals, but they um, increased their, they basically doubled their efficiency. They increased their inquiry to win rate by 100%. They actually secured the funding, and then the two guys that were actually leading the initiative got promoted. So that was a really successful customer for us. So I want to talk about, we talked about attribution and we talked about uh, funnel metrics. And some companies start with attribution, some companies start with funnel metrics, and some companies do both. There's been a lot of emphasis on attribution um, in the market uh, over the last few years. But our feeling is that attribution alone is not, is not enough. And the reason is that attribution re, uh, metrics report on marketing's contribution to revenue, but they do it at a point in time. So generally, you look, um, looking at attribution to, on a daily basis typically doesn't really help you that much. You want to look at it on a periodic basis. And so um, you might look at it monthly, quarterly, um, or you know, for special meetings. Funnel metrics, on the other hand, um, while attribution is, is, is good at uh, helping you prioritize um, your marketing budget, funnel metrics really help you create a lot of efficiency because uh, they really report on the quality of the lead management process and how well that's working. So the volume, velocity, conversion rates, all of those metrics really help when you study them to try to understand where, what's working and what's not working. And you can use those um, more readily in weekly meetings for optimization. Both metrics work hand in hand. They're, they're different and very complementary. But most important thing that we emphasize with our customers, the meeting cadence. Having regular meetings to look at the metrics, um, uh, discuss them, and then doing the optimization works really, really well. So I want to give a couple of examples here um, on, um, on how to actually use these metrics. So there's three of them. Which campaign type is driving the most sales? So this is a question So you're, that one might ask. One might ask, which campaign type is driving the most sales? What programs drive the highest conversion? And then can I measure PR? This has always been a question for me, um, being at this game for, marketing game for a little while. So in this particular example, um, he, these are, uh, the question that we're ans asking is, which campaigns drive the, drive the most sales? So I'm going to highlight um, uh, this segment in each one um, uh, because of the way Salesforce uh, puts these charts together. It's actually it can be different colors. So I wanted to make sure that we pointed out the right ones. And we're going to look at our um, our digital ads. So um, if you recall, there's there's um, uh, two uh, several types of attribution models that you can use. Uh, the first one we talked about was an even spread. So that's when you take the take the sale and you divide it ev evenly among all of the uh, all of the campaigns that contributed to it. Um, there's a first touch model. Um, so this would be looking at what was the very first first touch that that was involved in a successful sale. And then there's a time decay model, which um, looks at time um, that uh, would decay basically would reduce the weight based on when the um, uh, when the 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 touch came in so if it was earlier in the sales cycle it would have a high weight and if it's lower it would, or later it would have a lower weight so here we have um, uh, three different models and you can see here that um, uh, there's a smaller slice here for digital marketing in the even spread model um, but a much larger slice in the, dig, uh, in the first touch model, and again, a smaller slice in the time to decay model. So what this would tell you is that digital marketing is working better um, earlier in the, in the sales cycle. And obviously from the biggest, um, if this biggest slice here um, is green, uh, which is events. And so in this, in this particular case, um, from an even spread model standpoint, events are driving. Uh, uh, driving the most sales. Okay, second question. What programs drive the highest conversion rate? So um, here we have uh, a set of campaign types 
And you can see here, we've got an in overall inquiry to one percentage. And when you look at uh, this overall inquiry to one percentage, it looks like the best campaign type is email. Here's another uh, last question, is can I measure PR? And I wanted to talk a little bit about this because this was always a question that I had is, you know, can, can, we, can we show uh, a way to measure the impact of PR? And so here we have a, a chart which shows inbound requests on, the, on a website. And you can also show um, the number of mentions um, uh, on, a, on a daily basis. And we've mapped that against these inbound requests. And one of the things that we looked at was to look at days that are affected by PR and days that are not affected by PR. And you can see here that we did, we did a count of days unaffected by PR and a count of days affected by, by PR. And um, what you could see is that the number of inbound requests significantly increase on the days affected by PR. And so that could potentially be attributed to um, press relations activities. So uh, in summary, I wanted to, to uh, talk a little bit about our findings over the years of helping companies optimize their sales and marketing funnels and optimize their marketing mix. So the first thing is in order to get sales and marketing working together, the best thing to do is to put all of the data in one place. And we like Salesforce because uh, salespeople are typically already using Salesforce and um, as their CRM system. And so adding the marketing information there makes a lot of sense. So with sales and marketing seeing the same data, they can be much more efficient in how they work together. Um, we also, um, it also enhances the visibility into bottlenecks. So because sales and marketing are seeing the same information, they can, uh, they can address issues that, uh, that come up from time to time. Um, Putting this, the information in Salesforce also uh, allows for a, a very efficient channel for feedback to marketing, what campaigns are being effective, what are not being effective. And so what we found over time with sales and marketing working together, this better, better alignment um, generates better revenue success. So in summary, um, uh, we've talked about funnel metrics and attribution. Attribution helps you prioritize your marketing mix and make investments in the right places. Funnel metrics are key to the two operations. They help you optimize your processes, particularly the marketing to sales handoff. And then putting all your information inside Salesforce creates a single source of truth so that marketing and sales can work better together. So that ends my presentation. Um, I wanted to uh, thank Ingo for, for uh, joining me on this uh, on this webinar, and I will uh, turn this over and see if we have any questions. Great, thank you, Bonnie Katie, and Ingo. Katie, do we have yeah, Katie, do we have any questions? Yes, we do. So the first question is, which attribution model should I choose? So. That's a really good question, and it really it need, should be aligning to your um, your marketing strategy. So, for example, if you are a new company and you're just trying to you're trying to create a pipeline and you know and and build a funnel, you might want to emphasize campaigns that actually are first first type touch type campaigns or campaigns that happen earlier in the sales uh, sales cycle. So, either a first touch model or a decay model might work very well for you. So um, uh, the first thing to do is really understand what is your marketing strategy and where are you trying to um, generate leads maybe in the funnel um, and then use that to help drive what your, uh, what your attribution model is. Okay, awesome. All right, and feel free to type your questions in the Q&A chat box and we can get to those. Looks like we have another question. Uh, why is Salesforce a good place to store your sales and marketing data? Um, I'll go ahead and take that one. Um, so I've, I probably uh, emphasized that quite a bit in my, in my presentation, but um, 
Salesforce is a great place to store data because the, the salespeople are already using Salesforce really as their system of record for the results of sales. And so um, adding the marketing data and enriching the marketing data inside Salesforce um, is a, a, a great way to get just get sales and marketing looking at the same information. Uh, we found that to be very, very effective. Great. All right. And uh, another question, how long would a project take and what are the first steps to get started? I can Nico, uh, you take that well, one. I take the one from the uh, from the beginning. <laughs> so if you are um, in the in a situation that that you are dealing with these questions we have raised here, or looking into raising efficiency in your organization, we would um, you would contact us uh, at Bus Consulting. We would take a look at your situation um, in terms of your um, campaign processes of your data structures and um, have a sort of assessment of um, the um, ability to go quicker or less quicker in, into a project. So there might be some um, preconditions we have to work on before we can go into a technical implementation of full circle insights. But also we could um, figure out that um, you're already far away on, on your track and then we will bring um, Bonnie's team into play and have a detailed look in your installation infrastructure and then um, go in detailing the, um, yeah, the implementation of um, the apps and the customizing um, parts which are needed um, to achieve the goals. So part of the assessment is of course um, what are my, as I explained in the beginning, um, uh, doing on a look into the what are my marketing targets, my sales targets, uh, what are the current uh, data sets which um, I'm dealing with and discover the gap which we need to close with uh, full circle insights. And once we are in, an, um, um, in a project and would then together um, with Full Circle Insights have an assessment on the technical part via our, um, usually a webinar because the guys are sitting in California. Then we'll move on with uh, more details in the, uh, in the solution uh, from the Full Circle Insight technology. So Bonnie, you might explain the, the rest, how you do the, the, the final um, uh, setting for um, for the implementation. Yeah, so um, so there's uh, if you look at funnel metrics and attribution, attribution applications are pretty easy to install, um, and you know it literally can take it could take a couple hours, um, and they work uh, work right away, uh, right on top of your Salesforce data. Uh, Funnel metrics type projects can take a little longer because um, we want to try to make sure that the, the, the way that each company is, uh, has, is uh, managing their lead management process is modeled correctly and accurately inside Salesforce. And so um, the process for doing that can take a little bit longer. So typically on a funnel metrics type project, uh, it, we've, we've deployed as fast as 10 days, but sometimes it can take a couple of months because companies may be also in a discovery process for actually how they're doing their lead management process. So it um, really depends on, um, on the company, but we can do it as short as, as, uh, as 10 days. Yeah, usually it's uh, just, the, the more of the details we discover right up front the project, the quicker we are in the implementation later on. Great. Next question. That, so we don't have any other questions. So um, unless someone wants to put anything in the chat box, thank you both so much for presenting today. This was great. And we will, we have the recording that we can send out as well if you are interested. Thank you both. Okay, thank, uh, um, thank you, Bonnie, and thank you, um, Katie. Uh, and vielen Dank uh, an alle, die teilgenommen haben. Wir sind nun am Ende vom Webinar und wir haben eine sehr interessante uh, Präsentation gehört und über Funnel Metrics, Attribution und vor allem, wie wir die Effizienz im Vertrieb steigern können. Um, so gesehen, wichtige Themen für alle Marketingorganisationen, Vertriebsorganisationen und 
auch noch danke für die aktive Mitwirkung durch die Fragen. Was bleibt mir noch? Im Namen von Full Circle Insights und Bust Consulting wünsche ich Ihnen natürlich einen schönen Abend und äh, soll man in dieser Zeit auch sonst anderes sagen, als bleiben Sie gesund, kommen Sie gut durch diese unsicheren Zeiten. Ähm, wir halten den Kopf oben, wir sind positiv und wenn Sie an dem Thema Interesse haben, ich hoffe, wir haben es geweckt, dann zögern Sie auch nicht, uns direkt anzusprechen. Ich freue mich, von Ihnen zu hören. Vielen Dank.